uh, and in concentric circles also with other other participants like uh, the military and the and the, the donor community did large number of NGOs uh, to bring about improvements using the new tools Thank you. I have to be skeptical again and <coughs> sorry <coughs> Sorry to press this point, but again to be skeptical and say that should there be a fraudulent message put through or a, a message that goes, goes through and uh, is not detected and the ramifications of that are quite great, um, it, it, it sabotages the entire program and the credibility of the entire program. Well, that's why you have different sources. You know, you, you, if you only rely on these new tools, then you will not... It will not be enough to have a full situational awareness. That's what you need to make critical decisions in a, in a certain moment in a crisis. So you need, all, you need the traditional media. You need also, of course, the, the UN, the UN uh, situation reports and, and, and assessments. In the, case, in the case of Ushaidi, they confront on, on the map at the same time the information which comes from the, the, the citizens, the information from the official media and the situation reported by the government. So it's interesting to see the comparison, the differences between these reports. Okay. Uh, Mr. Desai, you had a question earlier. Sorry. Well, I already asked the question. Yeah, I, I, I okay. think the question that Nitin uh, posed is the correct one, and it gets right to the heart of this issue about new and old media. That, to me, the new, PD, uh, new media does completely transform power in the sense that the old media was centralized. It was one way. It was one size fits all. It was one to many, and it was controlled by its powerful owners or by people who could advertise. You know, to exaggerate, the, the, the saying freedom of the press is a great idea, especially if you own a press. <laughs> the new media is the antithesis of that. It's not one to many, it's one to one and many to many. It's highly distributed. And it, it cherishes this awesome neutrality. It will be what we want it to be. And I'm of the belief that, well, yeah, it's, it's being used to solve the problems of climate change and it's being used by evil people to commit horrific acts of terror. But I'm of the view that there are more good people than bad people, which is why Wikipedia, which has no editor and no central control, is developed by millions of people. It's 10 times bigger than Britannica. It's in 19 languages. And according to the big study that's been done, its quality is as good, roughly, as the one developed by the Nobel and, uh, Prize winners and the Pulitzer Prize winners. There is wisdom when you have full transparency and when the world gets to collaborate on something. Look at the new media and the old media in Iran right now. Which is the one that's more likely to be presenting a fair assessment of what actually occurred. So, um, you know, to, to me, we have an historic opportunity here. When I was a kid, and I was against the war in Vietnam in the 60s, I could mimeograph a poster and I could put it on a tree or put it up on a billboard. Today, people, young people and others organizing around this issue have at their fingertips this powerful tool for getting to the unconvinced, for, mobile, for changing real power relationships. And people who in the past could say, you know, could spread mud all over the windshield about climate change because they had the power to advertise and the power to manipulate the mass media can't do that the same way now. This is fundamentally about power. Let's have a question there, please. Uh, hi, it's Benjamin Barber. Uh, in 1984, in a book called Strong Democracy, I talked about the potential of new digital media. Back then, it was Warner Amex's cube system, a kind of first interactive attempt at cable, and suggested, indeed, it could be very uh, democratic and in the Wikipedia, the Wicca sense, Wikonomics Wikipedia sense. But I worry about the kind of unvarnished cyber, uh, cyber zealotry, I think, that sometimes emerges among those who today uh, are using uh, the uh, web, and I appreciate your skeptical line of questioning, not because I don't think the technologies don't lend themselves, as you've made very clear, to wonderful new uses, but because they are, as Mr. Stafford has said, tools. 
And as tools always do, particularly technological tools, they tend to reflect the society that creates them. We live in a commercial, power-oriented, monopolistic, pornographic society, roughly. And if you look at the actual uses of the web, commerce and pornography still dominate. The, use, the pornographic hits on the net outweigh anything in the way of political hits, either from the good or the bad side, and probably will for a long time. It's not, I suppose, an accident that the newest form of technology reflects the oldest obsessions uh, that we have as, as human beings, but that, that is a fact. But I worry about this kind of, you know, the unvarnished zealotry of the kind of Electronic Frontier Foundation people who seem to think if we just turn to the web, it will solve our problems, as you rightly suggest suggested uh, the neo-Nazis used the web very effectively. Mr. Von Braun, who killed a guard at the Holocaust Museum, was everywhere on the web, and uh, the anti-abortion sites on the web are rife. It is used as a tool of organization by all the plethora of human organizations we have, and unless we find ways, and this seems to be your question, to get on the ground a movement that then uses these wonderful tools to their own effect. These tools can be used in other ways. Their architecture, just to finish up, their architecture is, I think, uh, varied. It's very democratic on the one hand, but it's unmediated. It allows gossip and lies next to truth, and transparency and self-correction don't always work, particularly among those who are using it ignorantly, as many, many uh, people are. So I, I think we want to both, as you have shown, suggest how powerful a tool it can be, but at the same time understand its limits and understand that it can be a, a tool in the hands of those who are against climate change and so forth. The last thing I'll say is that it's, it, it, the platforms, programs, software, and hardware where are all still owned by large international media corporations, and that means that though the architecture itself tends to be democratic, there's a lot of pressure from those who own it uh, to move in quite a different direction, and we have to be aware of the way in which power inflects the web. Thanks. Bill, your conviction in the tool is, is huge, as we could see. Uh, how convinced are you that the tool will actually serve its purpose? Well, I don't, I mean, look, you still got to go to have the, do the work. I mean, it's true that during the Vietnam War, you could, all you could do was put up a poster. On the other hand, it's true that people managed to stop the Vietnam War, unlike the war in Iraq, when we had immense amounts of way to email each other about what a stupid idea it was. We still did it anyhow, you know. Um, you still got to go do the work. Uh, we think that for the kind of org uh, in particular, the kind of organizing that we try to do at 350.org and that we've done in huge events in the States lends itself to the architecture of the web. We think you no longer need to do the kind of March on Washington kind of protest where you get everybody in one place to do something. Instead, we're able to organize on the web to have widely dispersed things. Uh, there'll be thousands of things going on in virtually every country in the world, probably not North Korea, during on October 24th, okay? But by the end of the day, we'll have been able to take those images and make them into something much larger than their parts. So what I think is basically that each generation uses the tools that it has. And the one that we have at the moment uh, is this one. It allows a new reach into places where we haven't gone before, but it also allows a new theory about how you organize people. But you still get, it doesn't happen, uh, you know, the fact that the web exists doesn't, clearly doesn't allow things to, you know, automatically, you, you know, you still have to be brave enough to go out in the street in Tehran and do something and risk getting shot, you know, and then it's, you know, it might be good that someone can Twitter about it, but it doesn't happen in its own thing without, you know, without, the, without you going and doing what needs to be done. Okay, uh, did you have something to say about this? Uh, no, I would say that what I would do in response to your question, one of the things I, had, I did observe as an international civil servant was, the one new thing the Internet did was make international collaboration easier. The sort of mobilization that you're talking of could well have been done at the national level, but one of the very new thing which it did was to allow people who were doing similar things in their own countries to say, oh, well, there's, there's somebody else doing the same thing and allow them to start collaborating and working and in that sense amplifying their voices. So as somebody voiced the skeptical note, let me say that I, I, let, 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 that I do see the value of this. 